Lesson Nine of Within the Deep by R. Cadwallader Smith. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Lesson Nine The Fish of Our Rock Pools. The pools left by the falling tide have many an interesting thing to show us. There are living creatures in plenty besides the pretty weeds, shells, and other objects. Shrimps, prawns, and crabs abound in the rock pools and shallows with anemones and shellfish of all kinds. In the rock pools we shall also find the interesting little fish whose story we glance at in this lesson. Of course there are baby flatfish and large fish too along the shore, but these are only visitors. The real rock pool fish are those which live their lives there. Some of them are tiny things, two or three inches long, with quick movements like shrimps, they dart away as you approach. They have a way of hiding under weeds and rocks, being very clever at hide-and-seek, and knowing all the dodges. But, by using a net, you will soon capture a few of them. Then you can put them in a small pool and examine them, or even keep them in an aquarium, giving them clean seawater, seaweed, and the small shrimps on which they feed. In our lesson on fish nurseries, we saw how the sea stickleback, sand goby, and pipefish cared for their eggs or young ones. These three fish are often to be found by the shore. As you look into the clear and still waters of a pool, you may see a pipefish getting its dinner. This funny creature looks more like a pencil swimming than a fish. It may be a foot in length, but its body is no thicker than a pipe stem. It has very long jaws. They are quite useless, however, being fastened together. At their tip is an opening, though a very small one, and that is the mouth of the pipe fish. Of course, with such a mouth, the fish cannot bite its prey, and so has to suck in small creatures and swallow them. Its method of hunting them is strange. It stands on its head, as it were, takes in a mouthful of water, and spurts it out at the sandy bed of the sea. This stirs up the small living things, which are at once swallowed by the pipefish. We have already seen how the male pipefish carries his eggs in his pocket. Another curious thing is his suit of armor. Instead of scales, he has hard plates all over his body. Very often you may see young pipefish among sprats and whitebait in the fishmonger's shop. Most of the little shorefish are either gobies or blennies. No doubt they have to avoid the sharp eyes of gulls and cormorants, for they are very anxious not to be seen. Some of these rock pool fish do not mind being out of water for hours at a time. In every way, nature has fitted them for their life between sea and shore. They have cousins in warmer seas which love to come ashore at times. This is how a traveler describes one of these foreign gobies. Though they are fish and breathe by gills, they have a passion for the land, and during the daytime may always be seen ashore, especially where the coast is muddy. They bask in the sun and hunt for food, raising themselves on their fleshy fins. When pursued, they take great springs, using their tails and fins for the purpose, and if they cannot escape into the sea, they will dive down the burrow of a land crab, or dash into a bunch of mangrove roots. They are very wary, having eyes like swivels, to turn in all directions. The spotted goby, as we have already noticed, makes a nest under a shell and guards it until the eggs hatch. Two other gobies are quite common in the pools of our south coast, the one-spot goby and the two-spot goby. The back fin has the one spot, or two spots, from which they get their name. Though they are such mites, they have sharp teeth, as you may already know if you have caught them with your fingers. These lively little fellows are not very easy to catch. They have a cunning way of hiding amid sand and rock and are colored to suit such places. One strange thing about the gobies is their trick of anchoring themselves to a stone. You may wonder what kind of anchor they can use. It is a simple matter, however. The fins on the stomach are pressed together to form a little disc. This acts as a strong sucker, much like that of the sucking fish. If the goby wishes to stay still in one place, it presses its sucker to a stone, 
then it cannot be washed away by the ever-moving water. In the Blenny family, we find big, ugly fish, as well as pretty little ones of strange shapes and lovely colors. There are several kinds of small blennies in our rock pools. The eyed blenny or butterfly blenny is not very common along our shores, but may be seen now and again. It is only a few inches in length, with eyes like jewels, a kind of tuft over each eye, and a pretty spot on its tall back fin. It will live quite well in a glass tank of sea water. Someone who kept many interesting fish says of this blenny. Our little butterfly blenny was not often to be seen. It was using an old whelk shell for a nursery. In this broken old shell the dainty fish was able to hide, and was so nervous that we seldom saw it. But we placed some food near the hole in the shell, and were rewarded by the sight of the butterfly's head and its lovely eyes, each with a little movable tassel above it. Hidden under weed and stones is another small brown fish off the shore, the gunnel or butterfish. You may turn it out of its snug hiding place, but you will have a hard task to catch it, even in a small rock pool, and, once caught, it slips through your fingers like an eel. Its body is eel-shaped, with a narrow fin on the back and covered with a layer of slime. It well deserves the name of butterfish. The eggs of this strange little fish are rolled into a mass by the two parents. By curling their long, slimy bodies around the eggs, a closely packed ball is the result. This precious ball of eggs is then taken care of and guarded by the two fish. In this nursery, both the father and mother fish take their share as guardians. Exercises 1. Name three rock pool fish. 2. Describe the pipe fish. 3. How does the sand goby anchor itself? 4. In what ways are these rock pool fish so well fitted to live in such places? End of Lesson 9